Andrew Clifford, the uh, Chief Investment Officer at Platinum Asset Management. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Um, let's talk about the Aussie dollar. It's uh, trading, what, about 92, 93? It's had a wild ride over the last uh, 12 months to two years. It's been as high as $1.10 and as low as about 86, I think, in the last 12 months. What do you see, uh, what do you see in a medium term view with the Aussie from here? Yeah, perhaps I'll just start with a very longer term view for the Aussie dollar because um, that sort of sets the background for answering the question. And, and, and we would think longer term that the Aussie dollar is a fairly fully priced currency here. Um, we've had the benefits, you know, this long run up in our terms of trade, so great commodity prices, iron ore and coal. And, you know, that, that's clearly has faded now and is fading. But it's very hard to see us getting back to a situation where uh, our terms of trade have, you know, maintained the sort of strength that they have uh, in recent years that, that got us up to 110. Uh, the other big driving factor are interest rate differentials where we you know, clearly have much higher interest rates than the rest of the world. And again, that is, that is a trend that is fading. So the two things that drove the Aussie dollar all the way up are on the wane, and I think that's obvious to everyone. Um, but we'd expect that to continue to be the case you know, over the next five years and, and beyond. Um, and in fact, many people will point to the Aussie dollar now and, and are surprised it's not lower given what's happening to the iron ore price. Yes. Um, but there is one strength. Um, we seem to have forgotten about it, uh, about the you know, position this country's in, and that is, despite all the excitement around the budget of late, our government debt is actually very low by anyone's standards. Yes. Um, so the country's actually in a very solid financial position. And that is what differentiates us from the US or Europe or Japan, where there really is ultimately in the background an ongoing printing of money to keep those economies uh, uh, from you know, breaking up over the indebtedness of different, different groups within them. Yeah. So while longer term we think the Aussie dollar goes lower, and I think there are some risk factors in this economy with the amount of household debt um, it's one of the way governments end up with more debt is when households get into trouble, they tend to support them. Yeah. It's what's happened in the US, what's happened in Europe. Um, you know, if we were to get into that situation, you know, you might have a very dramatic change overnight, but there's no reason to particularly think that's happening now. So our view is that you, re you really don't want to own, you do want to be diversified out of the Australian dollar, but if tomorrow um, we had the Chinese government coming out with, a, say, some kind of uh, policy to get the economy going there again, I wouldn't be surprised in the shorter term to see it at 96, 97. Yeah. Um, but putting that aside, I think in terms of a long term picture, you know, I think that the Aussie dollar is, you know, the, the longer term trend is, 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 on, is lower. Is lower. And so, how should investors be positioning for that? Do you think, Andrew? I'm talking uh, yes, Australian yeah, investors. So, here, so, so. You, you can't you can't try and trade these 92s to 97. Uh, moves yeah. or whatever that occur, um, it, you know, it, it's it's just not possible to get that right often enough. I think it really is about having making sure that within your your portfolio, you have a you know a a, a part of that portfolio that is exposed to offshore uh, currencies because there is an enormous diversification benefit that we get from that, and and it's very clear that the path changed in recent you know, the last five, seven years. But if you look back at the longer history, at times when the world and, and markets are in, in a bit of trouble and, you know, they might be down 20% over the course of a year, invariably in that period, the Aussie dollar falls. Yes. Which means that part of your international portfolio, maybe your, your American and Japanese and European shares have fallen in value but you've, you've you actually had an cushion. offset, you've been cushioned yeah. by the falling Australian dollar. With the Australian shares, you get no cushioning, they've just gone down. You just wear it. Yeah. So, so I think that, you know, I think that it's a, it, it is a, um, uh, you know, an important part of anyone's portfolio to have international in there. Obviously, I have a bit of a bias towards that, but, sure. um, <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, and, and, and I think it's just getting that right mix between that and, and, and local assets that are, are going to more provide the income that people often need in their portfolios. Often talked about uh, with the Aussie dollar, the Big Mac index, which I think has the, uh, the Aussie at uh, you know, below 90 cents 
trending towards 80 cents. Mm. Have you got a figure in mind on a five-year view if you had to have a step in the dark? I, I would think that um, without any dramatic sort of events occurring here locally, um, you know, we would probably think the low 80s is probably uh, a, a point that, that we could get to readily. Yep. Um, but as we've seen, you know, there's, there's, there are plenty of problems out in the world of a, you know, in terms of the, the indebtedness of uh, in, in developed economies yes. and you know, some crisis that, that triggered something could see that as always the Aussie dollar lower, but that's always to our great benefit in terms of an economy and yes, and, and particularly investing internationally. internationally yep. Look, Andrew, thanks for that. Thanks for your insights. You guys are an international manager, so uh, and you do play the currency game, uh, or you, you profit from the currency uh, fluctuations mm. at times. So uh, very much appreciate your insights. You're in a good position to talk about it.